just as uh, Ella Donahue was leaving the studio a couple of minutes ago, and I, I mentioned uh, our next guest was coming up on the topic, uh, Ella said, boy, she said, I would agree with that. <laughs> I think a lot of people have been hearing this for many, many years. I lived in a, in a in a state back on the East Coast where we had one state legislator who proposed making English the official language of the state. He simply got shouted down, and uh, the local newspaper folks uh, t- decided at that point that he was going to be a target or would have a target on his back from then on, and, and he's no longer serving in public office. So you know how contentious this subject can be. I do want to remind you, it's 834. Right now it's 38 at our studios. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. And I'd very much today like to welcome uh, the director of Pro English to our program. His name is Bob Vandervoort. And uh, joining us from an office, Bob, you're somewhere ensconced in what, northern Virginia? Yeah, yeah, we're in Arlington, Virginia, so not not too far from our nation's capital here. Well, I I, I miss it because I've got my my, uh, big squiggly W hat on today, and I expect that World Series victory this year, and I'm not going to be there for it. Yeah, well, there's, they think the Nats are going to have a great team this year. We'll see. We, we Sometimes you hear that, and that doesn't quite pan out, but uh, we'll see. Well, to, right off the top, uh, to move on from baseball, <laughs> sure. save, save us a little time. Uh, I was going to uh, point out, uh, I saw some details the other day. We have a number of people in the U.S. Senate who are sponsoring this legislation, and there may be some hope, finally, because we have a, a U.S. Senate now dominated by Republicans. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited. Uh, Senator James Inhofe just recently introduced a bill. It's S-678, and it's already starting to get some Senate co-sponsors. This bill would make English the official language for the United States. Uh, so, so, Bill, make sure your, your listeners urge their Idaho senators to get on this bill and, and support it. Right now, is it just a small group of people who are actually uh, signed on as sponsors? There are, but we expect it'll grow. It, it, the bill was just recently introduced a few weeks ago, and there's also a companion bill in the House of Representatives that Congressman Steve King has introduced. It's H.R. 997, and his bill would also make English the official language. It's just the, the House version, and, and again, we need all your Idaho callers and listeners to make sure their congressman gets on it. I was The young woman who was here just a few minutes ago as a guest on the program was explaining that even in her situation at the college that she attends, she was explaining that there are so many different languages being spoken there uh, that it's sometimes difficult to communicate with your fellow students. And it struck me that we are really turning into a, a national tower of Babel, if you will. Yeah, it's it's interesting you should mention that because we're actually involved in litigation. We're involved in a lawsuit in Arizona representing a nursing student, and she was suspended from her community college because she wanted her classmates to speak in English. She couldn't understand during group projects what, what the other students were saying. And the school basically called her a racist and a bigot. They gave her a nine-month suspension. And, and this is a state that actually has English as its official language. So, so we've, we're, we, are, we are suing the school and trying to defend her in court. But it's, it's just amazing that it's come to this. I remember, gosh, being a young reporter 25 years ago and interviewing a woman at a local uh, uh, a Hispanic society who was telling me, she said that language itself is culture. And I guess if you dilute uh, the English language, and and I know that I have a friend, he always jokes, we have just one culture, and that's American culture, and he gets into some arguments because of that. But it is, it is, it, it doesn't seem we have the same interest. The immigrants of the past all thought they should learn English as quickly as possible to succeed. We don't seem to have that any longer, and I, I guess people are worried that, that that overall culture is going to be harmed and maybe break apart. Yeah, Bill, I think that's a and that's a very valid concern. I think, you know, as as you just said, you know, the, as maybe about a century ago, the model in this country was that we were a melting pot. We expected people to come here, learn the language, assimilate. You had presidents like Teddy Roosevelt, a Republican, and Woodrow Wilson, a, a Democrat, both encouraging immigrant assimilation. And, and today now, you know, 30 or 40 years, we've had all this multiculturalism and bilingualism and this push to basically fracture the nation. And, and it's, it's, if anything, it's, it's making us more divided instead of bringing us together. Our guest uh, this morning uh, during this uh, half hour of the program is Bob Vandervoort, and he is the, uh, the director of Pro-English an organization that has been working to make English the official language of the United States, and he's telling us 
There are a couple of companion bills in Congress right now that seek to do that. Uh, we're going to talk more with him on the other side of the break. It's 838 right now at our studios. 37 is our, our temperature. You're listening to talk, uh, well, point out top story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com with Bill Colley. Bob, before we, uh, we get to the break, for people who'd like to know more about Pro English, can you send them to the website? Yeah, absolutely. If they check out proenglish.org, they can find a lot of stories and updates on this, some polling data that we link to, and they can also sign up for our action alerts. Uh, we've actually got a lot of listeners in Idaho we send an alert out to. Hopefully they're, they're listening in this morning. And, yeah, sign up, uh, sign up and find out more. Well, stick around. Uh, we'll spend a few more minutes with you on this subject and, and really see if we can't get some people involved, too, as well, in, in making this change. And you hate to say it, but perhaps the future of this country is really at stake, at least the country that we've known. More details on all of that coming up with our guest, Bob Vandervoort, in just a few minutes. It's 840. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Our, our guest in this segment of the program is Bob Vandervoort, and he is the director of Pro English, which is an organization that, which is dedicated to making English the official language of the United States. We were talking about this just briefly yesterday. At the founding of this nation, there had been some discussion about an official language. They actually considered German, which likely would not have been a good fit because, well, most of the people already here were speaking English, and that's a difficult language change to make when you already have the culture a majority going in one particular direction. And a lot of people are surprised when they hear that English is not the official language of the United States. You're listening to Top Story. It's 844, 38 at our studios. You're listening also to News Radio 1310, KLIX, or online anywhere around the world at newsradio1310.com. Bob, uh, when we talk about that, people who seem to be shocked by the fact that we don't have an official language, uh, it, it, it speaks to, I guess, the notion that a lot of people just stand back and they're just, uh, I, I guess, incredulous that we don't have something like that already in place. Yeah, exactly, Bill. I, and I actually, I, I want to clarify about you know the German issue in the founding. Um, there was it wasn't a vote to make German the official language, but there was a vote to print federal laws in German as well as English. There was a proposal <laughs> to do that, and uh, but it never it. it but that was just a proposal. It didn't actually ever come up for a vote. So, but there, but yeah, people. Um, People are surprised, and polling data shows most people think English already is the official language of this country, and they're surprised to know it's not. And the polling data shows that when people hear it's not, they want it to be. In fact, most of the polls consistently show over 80% of the American people want English to be our official language. And I'm looking at our webpage right now, proenglish.org. If you go under research, you'll see all the polling data we have up there, English by the polls. Bill, this cuts across all kinds of lines, party lines, ethnic lines, education, religious income. On almost no other issue will you find so much support. So I would you know, encourage your listeners to take heart. It's actually, you know, the majority of Americans want this. It's only these sort of loudmouth cultural elites that are trying to say it's bigoted or racist. So. I, I was mentioning off air, we, we had a, uh, that brief discussion off air where I, I talked about the statement made. It may have been, I, I think I may have seen it at the Daily Caller, that uh, the mayor of Manchester, New Hampshire, was saying that there are 83 different languages, and Manchester's not a huge city, 83 different languages being spoken in, in the local high schools. Mm. How, can you, how can you function? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's perfectly true. I mean, there's... there's um... There's actually 300 different languages spoken in this country. So how do you pick and choose which languages you're going to translate for and which ones you won't? In fact, when Kathleen Sebelius was the uh, the HHS secretary, she announced that she was going to provide Obamacare in over 150 different languages. Well, who's paying for that? And what does that do to promote assimilation? So at Pro English, we actually filed a Freedom of Information Act request to find out what this is going to cost the taxpayer for all this translation work. And, you, Bill, you'd probably not be surprised to learn that they have been very slow and, and not very forthcoming on, on revealing that info for us. So, a, de a decade or so ago, I was talking to a state legislator in New York. And uh, at the time, I think that schools in New York City were teaching in 18 different languages. Uh, and at the time, they had to hire all of those different teachers. And that's not just... 
you know, a teacher to teach you, you're, you're talking multiple subjects. So you don't have 18 different teachers. You have 18 times how many subjects are being taught in the schools. No wonder we're, we're breaking our budgets because of, uh, of, of these issues. Yeah, and when schools do use that bilingual education approach that sort of emerged in the 70s, the students aren't learning English, so they're being held back. Our chairman, Dr. Rosalie Porter, she came here from Italy at the age of six, and her family didn't know very much English, and but she learned it very quickly in the schools, because back then we had a focus on immersing people in English, and she was able to succeed and get her Ph.D., and she is a strong advocate for English immersion in the schools instead of these bilingual programs you mentioned where you have multiple subjects being taught in multiple languages and it's not it's not effective and it it certainly doesn't help the taxpayer. Bob Vandervoort is joining us this morning from Pro English and talking about this effort to try and bring about English as a national language uh, only taking us nearly two and a half centuries to do that. Uh, when when you mentioned uh, uh, James Enhoff, now he's from Oklahoma where I, I'm sure that this is an issue that he's got a great deal of support uh, and and in the Midwest and in the Western states, flyover country, as it's called, I'm sure that's the case. But you reference the elites. And because of the population centers in California, New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, I would imagine that's the hurdle you have to clear. Or even in Florida, where we now have southern Florida as really a Spanish-speaking enclave, it would be very difficult, I would, I would guess, to find legislative support in places like that. Well, I mean, yes and no. It's interesting that some of the states you mentioned, at least back in the 80s, did pass official English laws. Uh, Florida is one. Uh, California is another. Uh, if you go to our, our, again, to our webpage, proenglish.org, we've got a map that lists all of the states that have official English on the books. Um, but I, I think the resistance, you know, there's, there's, um, there's sort of a fear, I would think, from our political leaders. They don't want to be you know, screamed and hollered at by activists that they're doing the wrong thing. And yet most Americans think this would be the right thing to do. In fact, most immigrants support official English. It's just these so-called spokesmen uh, of these so-called immigrant groups that speak out against making English official. I would imagine, though, that if you have a state like California that made this uh, this decision on its own 30 years ago, but if you were to ask a, a Barbara Boxer today if she would support this on the national level, she's looking over her shoulder, uh, and, and you know you've got that. That's the one thing I would I would I would think Democrats fear is some sort of a backlash from their own base on this. Well, it's possible. I mean, but there's you know there are there is a lot of Democratic support at least among the rank and file. I mean, you you certainly you do have you know more of the. The old-fashioned liberal believes that immigrants should come and and assimilate and learn English, and, and that that's how they'll succeed. You know, there's the sort of the newer multicultural left, I would say, that's pushed back against that kind of that old, you know, kind of Arthur Schlesinger style liberal assimilation model. Now they're now they're full on with the kind of uh, confrontational, almost an anti-American type uh, uh, aggressiveness. Has it been? That people in the past did not push hard enough for this because they just didn't feel, though, that I mean, one of the things I heard this past week from all of the talking points from Hillary Clinton's team was, well, we have bigger issues to talk about. And that's how you usually you try to spin things and deal with them when you don't like them. But I get the impression that this has been a big issue with the, the rank and file when you mentioned that in, in probably both political parties as well as just most Americans. But it seems that it gets buried every time it comes up because someone says, we've got a bigger crisis we have to handle at the moment. Well, I think there's, there's, you know, there's, there may be some, uh, some evidence of that. I know there's, um, you know, some of the polling data shows that, that people very strongly by wide margins from all sectors support this idea, but they're, they're not, the intensity of the support is not as strong as, say, on other issues. So, you know, without that passion to make English official, you know, I, I think you're correct that sometimes it gets lost in the sh in the shuffle. But there is sort of a bigger issue here because we can look to countries, say, just to our north in Canada, where they're divided over language with Quebec versus the English-speaking parts of the country. And you can look – actually, I was just – last night I was at a – there was a Ukrainian cultural event that was being hosted in the area, which I attended. And, and they, they talked a little bit about the conflict there. And, and one of the things that 
is a part of that conflict. It's not the only thing, but there is a divide over language in Ukraine between the Russian-speaking portion of the country versus the Ukrainian-speaking portion. So language can divide nations, and, and in that sense, you know, it is a vital and important issue that we need to really take seriously. And as you, you know, the, the, the reference to Canada, I went to visit a friend who worked at CBC probably 14, 15 years ago, and I uh, was told, look, everybody, uh, despite what the government says, everybody still speaks English. You can't accomplish anything in the city without it. And if you went into the local Italian social club, we did that for coffee, everyone spoke English. When you went down the street to the local Greek diner, everyone spoke English. And if you called someone on the telephone at a business and they answered or answered in French and you would just simply say something in English, they would quickly just transition. So it's almost, it, it, it's, it's one of those things that they did because I think it made people feel nice, but it, it really doesn't hold any, um, it, it, it's not effective. And, and, and so you can hear these arguments. That would probably be the argument made by the folks on the left. It's done successfully other places, but it really isn't. Yeah, it's not, and and I think a lot of that, a lot of those laws were were passed to cater to, as you know, the French Quebec province. And what's resulted is there's a huge cost to the taxpayers in Canada for all these translations that uh, you know parts of Canada would never even use because they just use English. And there's also the, there's also you know some real uh, friction about that. You know there are certain certain government jobs in Canada will only go to people who are fluent in both languages. So that shuts out a lot of people from you know from from some good jobs. And that's a concern. You know you could see something like that starting to happen here, where unless you speak you know another language, if you're just an English speaker, you could be finding yourself discriminated against. It's 854 on News Radio 1310 KLIX, as well as News Radio 1310.com. 38 at our studios. This is Top Story with Bill Colley. Our guest, Bob Vandervoort, is the director of Pro English, joining us this morning. And he's talking about the effort to make English the official language of the United States. I have two other things I wanted to run by you. I remember Pat Buchanan saying in an interview a couple of years ago uh, that whenever someone says diversity makes us stronger, they don't actually have any evidence to provide. Uh, for that argument. And number two, if we had English as the official language, would it discourage some immigration here, let's say maybe in favor of more English-speaking people who already are familiar with the culture because of the language? Well, I think on your first point, you know, Pat Buchanan, he's been a very strong supporter of official English in his columns and his and in his writings. So, I, you know, I think that he's, you know, he's, you know, if you've read, if you Look at his books, and I mean the 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 work he's put into studying this. I think he's I think he's right. There's there there definitely is, uh, you know, it's it's very hard to find where this multicultural model has been successful for any any long term duration. And and to your second point on on what would happen if we made English the official language, I'm not I'm not 100 percent certain how that would affect immigration patterns, but I do think that it would certainly send an important message to people, especially to new arrivals, that if you want to interact with your, your government of your newly chosen land, you're going to have to interact with them in English and not expect, like what Kathleen Sebelius did, that she'll provide you with over 180 different translators to get sign up for a government program. So I do think that in that sense, it would encourage greater assimilation to our country. I was going to say, imagine that, setting expectations and discipline. There's a novel <laughs> thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, if we did it pass, I think we could do it again and it would work. Again, for people who are tuning in, listening, uh, can you give them the website? They can go there and obviously learn a great deal more about this. Yeah, I hope. check out proenglish.org, and if you go to that webpage, there's a lot of resources, and they can also sign up for our emails. We send them out you know, about monthly, so we won't fill up your inbox, but we will give you some important info on this issue. I thank you very much for your time, and uh, the day may come, I hope soon, where we can talk about the success. Yes, I look forward to it. Well, you know, you'll have to find another line of work, though. Well, we still have a few states left that haven't passed it, so we'll have to, get, <laughs> we'll have to focus on them when that happens. So. All right. Well, Bob, thank you much for your time this morning, and uh, enjoy the day. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. You too. Take care now. Uh, Bob Vandervoort is the director of uh, Pro English, joining us this morning from his office uh, in suburban Washington. 
and uh, sharing some thoughts with us about that effort to make English the official language of the United States. As he pointed out, there are some sponsors now behind this legislation in both the Senate and in the House, but they need a few more people to sign on. And as he said early on, if you're just joining us, he said early on, one of the things that you can do is urge your own members of the House and Senate to get behind this bill. So that would mean if you happen to see at a town meeting or you have an opportunity to uh, perhaps contact the office of one of your two U.S. senators, you could go ahead and do that. Of course, that would be a, a Jim Risch and, of course, Mike Crapo. And over on the House side, uh, you've got Congressman Simpson and Congressman Labrador. And Congressman Labrador, who is bilingual, by the way, I'm sure would actually back this notion. That's an opportunity for you. Pick up that telephone, make that call, or send that letter or email, and see if we can't get the ball rolling on all of this. It's 58. News is coming up next from Fox. And then one more hour of Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Got plenty more to talk about, too, as well in the, uh, in the next hour. There is a, it looked like a victory this week when it came to the ATF's effort to ban certain, certain rounds of ammunition. But now you've got people who are fighting back the, uh, the anti-gun left, making a lot of noise, more details on the way.